Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the reason I didn't allow you to go and attack the city was that there were some Muslims, few Muslims. There weren't even many in number. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, had I allowed you to go in, you could have easily killed some Muslims who lived in Mecca and you didn't know them. Imagine the Muslims who take car bombs right now and put in the middle of a city center or next to a masjid. Why, why did you do that? We want to kill one kafir. There was a kafir there. Okay. And what about all these Muslims who are there? No problem. Inshallah, Allah will sort them out. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأثابهم وأثابهم فتحا قريبا وموانم كثيرة يأخذونها وكان الله عزيزا حكيما وعدكم الله مغانم كثيرة تأخذونها فعجل لكم هذه فعجل لكم هذه وكف أيدي الناس عنكم ولتكون آية للمؤمنين ولتكون آية للمؤمنين ويهديكم صراطا مستقيما وأخرى لم تقدروا عليها قد أحاط الله بها وكان الله وكان الله على كل شيء قديرا ولو قاتلكم الذين كفروا لولوا الأدبار ثم لا يجدون ثم لا يجدون وليا ولا نصيرا سنة الله التي قد خلت من قبل ولن تجد لسنة الله تبديلا وهو الذي كف أيديهم عنكم وأيديكم عنهم ببطن مكة من بعد من بعد أن أظفركم عليهم وكان الله بما تعملون بصيرا هم الذين كفروا وصدوكم عن المسجد الحرام والهدي معكوفا والهدي معكوفا أن يبلغ محلة ولولا رجال مؤمنون ونساء مؤمنات لم تعلموهم أن تطؤوهم فتصيبكم منهم معرة بغير علم ليدخل الله في رحمته ليدخل الله في رحمته من يشاء لو تزينوا لعذبنا الذين كفروا منهم عذابا أليما إذ جعل الذين كفروا في قلوبهم الحمية حمية الجاهلية فأنزل الله سكينته على رسوله وعلى المؤمنين وألزمهم كلمة التقوى وكانوا أحق بها وأهلها وكان الله بكل شيء عليما لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لتدخلن المسجد الحرام لتدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا 
هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه كزرع أخرج شطأه فآزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراع يعجب الزراع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers in Islam Inshallah ta'ala this morning we are going to uh, complete our journey in Surah Al-Fatih uh, so far, the last two sessions that we've had, mainly we have talked about the Treaty of Al Hudaybiyah, the wonderful treaty, the peace treaty that the Prophet ﷺ has signed with the people of Quraysh, and how important this treaty was, and how an amazing victory it was for the Prophet ﷺ and for the believers. And today, inshallah ta'ala, this morning, we're going to look at other aspects of this amazing surah, Surah Al-Fatih. And also, the mission that the Prophet sallallahu has gone for that day when he was going to Mecca. We mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu in the sixth year of, uh, of Hijrah, in the month of Dhul-Qa'dah, that was the month when the Prophet sallallahu went to Mecca for Umrah. He had asked, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has asked and some of the tribes that lived around the city of, Mac or city of Medina uh, to come with him. And also uh, the other thing that happened was uh, the Munafiqoon of Medina, they themselves, they didn't go with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to commentate and he's going to tell us why they haven't gone. So, and the excuses that they are going to make. Also, what we're going to talk about this morning will include those companions who have given their allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, this morning we're going to touch upon what was the hikmah? Why did Allah prevent the Muslims from fighting the people of Quraysh? Quraysh deserved to be fought against, especially at that particular moment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stopped the Muslims from fighting the Quraysh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to tell us why he has done that. Also in this morning, what we're going to talk about is and something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a glad tidings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give those believers. He's going to tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless them with maghanima kathira meaning they will be given an, a lot of an, war booty and after this particular an, journey, the journey of, an, an, of, of, the, an, of Sulh al-Hudaybiyah. So if we begin an, and remind ourselves, for example, the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna fatahna laka fatahan mubina. When was this surah actually revealed? This surah was revealed after the Prophet Sallallahu returned from Sulh al-Hudaybiyah. As the Prophet Sallallahu was going back to Medina, before he got to Medina, this surah was revealed, all of it. Inna fatahna laka fatahan mubina. Umar radiallahu anhu is telling us, Umar radiallahu anhu has said, because I spoke to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after he has agreed 
upon the points of those of that particular agreement i wasn't happy with it and i have expressed my displeasure of this particular agreement and he felt Afterwards, he felt bad about it. Just imagine Umar saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alasna ala al-haq, ya Rasulullah. Are we not upon the truth? And Umar radiallahu anhu also saying, our martyrs, those of us that they kill, are they not going to go to Jannah? And those of them that we kill, are they not going to go to hellfire? So Umar radiallahu anhu was expressing his feeling and emotions and, and, and his anger. And, and Umar after that, he has felt really, really bad. And Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, I have made, I have given so much sadaqah just to make up for that moment. And, and Umar also used to say, I wish I became Muslim after that moment. Subhanallah, because it wasn't easy. It, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the beginning of this surah, he reminds us, inna fatahna laka fatahan mubina. Verily, we have given you, O Muhammad, a manifest victory. For what reason? لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَقْرَ Imam al-Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, Abdurrahman al-Sa'di, the Shaykh of Imam Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen, one of his amazing Shaykhs, he, in his tafsir, tafsir al-Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has mentioned and what the Prophet Sallallahu has agreed to and what the companions have agreed to were difficult things. And because of that, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has said, because of that agreement and because of the patience that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has expressed and also the believers, the patience that they have expressed, Allah has said, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ That Allah may forgive you your sins of the past and the future and complete his favor on you and guide you on the straight path. And also, لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has said, لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Because the companions themselves, they have expressed a lot of, a lot of patience by accepting this agreement. So Umar radiallahu anhu has said, and as we were going back to Medina, he said, I went ahead of the, I went ahead of the, uh, the army of the companions. He said, I was afraid Allah might reveal Quran that will be about me. Umar was very scared. He said, I thought maybe Allah might reveal on our way back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might reveal Quran where he will talk about me and how I spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he was really afraid and he was worried. And he said, I went ahead of the, the, the army or the companions. And, and after that, Umar radiallahu anhu said, I was called and I was told the Quran was revealed. And he was afraid and he was very worried. Maybe this Quran will be about Umar radiallahu anhu and what he has done and how he has reacted after the Prophet sallam has accepted the agreement. And he said, I came back and then the Prophet sallam recited to me this surah. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min them. This amazing surah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him and how things have happened. And because of them accepting this agreement, which was very difficult to accept, how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive the Prophet sallam, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless the believers with Jannah, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes the munafiqeen. Do you know those munafiqeen who didn't go with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, سَيَقُولُ لَكَ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ شَغَلَتْنَا أَمْوَالُنَا وَأَهْلُونَا فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا يَقُولُونَ And then Allah exposes them. يَقُولُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Subhanallah, very serious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those of the Bedouins who lagged behind will say to you, those who didn't come with you, our possessions and our families occupied us. The reason we couldn't go with you, Ya Rasulullah, it wasn't because we were scared, okay, or we didn't like to come with you. We really wanted to come with you. But because of our possessions, our wealth, and our families, we were preoccupied with them. And then they asked the Prophet to seek forgiveness for them. فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا Ya Rasulullah, make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And then Allah exposes them right now. يَقُولُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ They do say with their tongues what is not in their heart. Ah, what was in their heart when they said to the Prophet ﷺ, we can't come with you. Because the Prophet ﷺ said to them, come with me, we are going to Mecca. We are going to perform Umrah. And they said, oh, we can't really, can't come with you this time. Next time, 
Okay, we can't come with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now exposes them. يَقُولُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they will say to you with their tongues something which is not in their heart. What was in their heart? What was in reality in their heart is, and they thought, بَلْ ظَنَنْتُمْ أَلَّنْ يَنْقَلِبَ الرَّسُولُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِيهِمْ أَبَدًا Allah SWT said, guys, the reason you didn't go with the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, the reality of it was this. You thought if they go to Mecca, that the Quraysh will kill them. That's why the, that's why the Bedouins didn't go. They felt like the companions and the Prophet ﷺ, they will be exposed to so much danger. If they go to Mecca, just like this, they will be killed and they will be annihilated. That's what they thought. And they had a bad thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They thought Allah was, is not going to be able to protect them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exposed them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and the desert Arabs who stayed behind will say to you, we were busy with our property. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah, بَلْ ظَنَنْتُمْ أَلَّنْ يَنْقَلِبَ الرَّسُولِ No, you thought that the messenger and the believers would never return to their families. And this thought warmed your hearts. Your thoughts are evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them. For you are corrupt people. And you are also people who have been destroyed. Subhanahu wa kuntum qawman pura. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also exposes them further. سَيَقُولُ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ إِذَا انْطَلَقْتُمْ إِلَى مَغَانِمَ لِتَأْخُذُوا هَذَرُونَا نَتَّبِعْكُمْ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا كَلَامَ اللَّهِ قُلْ لَنْ تَتَّبِعُونَا كَذَلِكُمْ قَالَ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ بَلْ تَحْسُدُونَنَا بَلْ كَانُوا لَا يَفْقَهُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا the companions who went with the Prophet Sallam during this journey, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has promised them, I am going to bless you with so much war booty. You will have a lot of wealth soon after you go back. Look at the Quran, SubhanAllah. This, this shows you that the Quran is from Allah. It's not from the Prophet Sallam. The Prophet Sallam is being told before anything happens. He's being told this is what is going to happen in the near future. Very soon, when you go back to Medina, you will be able to get غنائم كثيرة. You will be able to get war booty. You will win and you will have so much wealth very soon. So look at the munafiqeen right now and those Bedouins. When they found out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them that they're going to go and get so much wealth soon. What did they say this time? We are coming with you. We are ready to come. And then Allah subhanahu wa the Prophet was told, say to them, you guys, you're not coming with us this time. We asked you before to come with us when we were going to Mecca. You didn't want to come with us. This time, you're not coming with us. Only those who went to Mecca will go for this expedition. Nobody else. When you, the believers, set off for somewhere that promises war gains, those who previously stayed behind will say, let us come with you. Daruna natabi'akum. Allow us to come with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, they want to change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَرُونَا نَتَّبِعْكُمْ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا كَلَامُ اللَّهِ They want to change what? They want to change Allah's words. What was Allah's words? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only give this ghanima to those people who went with the Prophet ﷺ to the Treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah. Those people who went to the Prophet, with the Prophet ﷺ to Mecca. No one else is going to go with, with the Prophet ﷺ this time. So look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Those very people, what do they say? فَسَيَقُولُونَ بَلْ تَحْسُدُونَنَا They will accuse the companions. What will they accuse them? They will say to them, you guys are jealous. You guys are not good people. بَلْ تَحْسُدُونَنَا So look what they say. They will say to them, you envy us. That's why you don't want us to come with you. You don't want us to get this khair. Okay? Why are you telling us not to come? Look what Allah said. Nay, but they understand not except a little. They had to face the consequences of their actions. Do you know these days people want to do things, but they don't want to face the consequences of their actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, guys, 
Ya Arab, Ya Munafiqun, this is the consequences of your actions. You sat down when you were supposed to go. You sat down. You didn't go with the Prophet Sallallahu You didn't support the Muslims. You didn't help the Muslims. You sat down when you were supposed to go in with when you were supposed to go with them. Now you can't just say we want to come with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, la yafqahuna illa qalila. Dear brothers, inshaAllah ta'ala, I'm gonna move on to another important section. And just before I move on to that section, I just want to close off this section. The, 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 those who remain behind, those who didn't come. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet قُلْ لِلْمُخَلَّفِينَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ سَتُدْعَوْنَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ أُلِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ تُقَاتِلُونَهُمْ أَوْ يُسْلِمُونَ This is another prediction that the Quran has made. قُلْ لِلْمُخَلَّفِينَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ Say to them, O Muhammad, to the Bedouins who lagged behind, those who didn't come with you, you shall be called to fight against a people given to great warfare then you shall fight them or they shall surrender. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers, they will have to fight soon the Romans and the Persians. The ulama, they have said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who, whom he means, those people who have been given great warfare, who are they? The ulama, they have said, these people are the Romans and the Persians because the Muslims soon, they were going to begin to fight them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that you will be invited one day to go and fight those people. So be ready for them. And who was the one, who were the people who called them to go and fight those people? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar ibn Khattab, the Khulafa al-Rashidun. They were the ones who called the Muslims to go and fight those people. And inshallah ta'ala, the next part of the surah I want to um, bring, uh, bring, bring, bring your attention to today is all the companions who have made the pledge with the Prophet ﷺ, the pledge of allegiance under this particular tree. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ The Prophet ﷺ, when did he do this? When Uthman was sent to Mecca and the rumor came that Uthman was killed. When that rumor came, the Prophet ﷺ called all the companions who were with him. He called them and he said, I want you to give me an allegiance, pledge of allegiance that we're gonna fight to the death. No one is allowed to run away. If we fight the Qurayshis, the Qurayshis right now, no one is allowed to run away from the fight. We will fight to the death. So all of them came to give the Pledge of Allegiance to the Prophet, except one. And that guy was Munafiq, Jadd ibn Qais. Jadd ibn Qais, he was found hiding under a camel. He didn't wanna give that allegiance. And he was like, he was seen. He was the only one who didn't come and gave this bay'ah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was, he was just, he was munafiq, jaddi muqis. The rest of the companions were there. They gave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Pledge of Allegiance. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa said, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ when, when we categorize the companions in terms of their, in terms of how virtuous so they were, some of them were more virtuous than others. So those who accepted Islam during the early stages, and for example, like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and then Uthman and, and Talha and people like that, they are considered to be the top of the companions. And then those who joined them after that, and then those who've accepted, and those who came from the Ansar, Medina. And then among them, among the list is these 1500 companions or 1400 companions who gave their Pledge of Allegiance to the Prophet so They are considered as like some of the top companions. All of them will be going to Jannah. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِ That particular tree right now, is it still there? It's not there. It was removed. Because people almost went over there and, and kind of like, they wanted to kind of like do acts of worship around that tree. So it was taken down. Okay, so where is Hudaybiyah? Hudaybiyah is when you are coming to the city of Mecca from the direction of Jeddah, as you are coming from the direction of Jeddah. Those of you who have recently been to Mecca, and before you enter the city of Mecca, what do you see? You see sign. a sign which is like an open, have you seen the little bridge, an open book? Can someone remember that? Can you see, can you remember that when you're on, your, when you're on the motorway? When you're on the motorway, there's an open book. So Hudaybiyah is in that region towards the right hand side. That's where Hudaybiyah is. So just the outskirts of Mecca. You can see Mecca when, when you are there. So that's where the uh, Pledge of Allegiance has taken place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Prophet 
Allah was pleased with those companions. Allah was pleased with the believers when they swore allegiance to Ya Muhammad. Under the tree, he knew what was in their hearts and so he sent tranquility down to them and rewarded them with a speedy triumph. The next point I want to bring to your attention, which is very important is, why were the Muslims not allowed to fight that day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to explain to us. هم الذين كفروا وصدوكم عن المسجد الحرام والهدي معكوفا أن يبلغ محلة الله first of all lists the reasons why the people of Mecca should have been fought the Muslims they had the right to fight them enough good, good enough reasons to fight them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us why he did not allow them to fight Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Wa sud, wa masjid al -haram. They were the ones who disbelieved. The kuffar of Quraysh. They were the ones who disbelieved. Okay? So that's good enough reason for you to fight them. Kafaru. They did not just disbelieve. They also barred you from the sacred month. They stopped you from entering where? The sacred, month, the, the sacred mosque. And who prevented the offering from reaching its place. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions, they took with them sacrificial animals. Al-Hajj. Ma'kufan. An yablugha mahillah. And then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala now is going to tell us why the companions were not allowed to go and attack the city of Mecca. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْلَا رِجَالٌ This ayah, this part is very important for us. Yeah. Okay? I want you to really pay attention to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْلَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ أَنْ تَطَأُوهُمْ فَتُصِيبَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَعَرَّةٌ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ لِيُدْخِلَ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. If there had not been among them unknown to you believe in men and women whom you would have trampled underfoot inadvertently incurring guilt on their account what does that mean imagine if the muslims attacked the city of mecca that day what would have happened is some of the companions could have easily killed other companions who lived in mecca and no one knew them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the reason I didn't allow you to go and attack the city was that there were some Muslims, few Muslims, there weren't even many in number. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, had I allowed you to go in, you could have easily killed some Muslims who lived in Mecca and you didn't know them. Imagine the Muslims who take car bombs right now and put in the middle of a, of a city center or next to a masjid and say we, uh, we, we want to kill, why, why did you do that? We want to kill one kafir, there was a kafir there. Okay, and what about all these Muslims who are there? No problem. Inshallah, Allah will sort them out. <laughs> so just, just, just look at this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the reason I have prevented you from going to fight the Qurayshis during that time was that there were Muslims in Mecca that you could have easily killed them because you didn't know them. You wouldn't know them. Subhanallah. So Allah Ta'ala said, that's why I didn't allow you to go in. وَلَوْلَا رِجَالُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءُ الْمُؤْمِنَاتُ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ أَنْ تَطَأُوهُمْ فَتُصِيبَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَعَرَّةٌ Subhanallah. And what would have happened at that time? Inadvertently incurring guilt on their account. فَتُصِيبَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَعَرَّةٌ بِغَيْرَ عِلْمٍ And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also has mentioned another amazing reason. Allah said, Also Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, لِيُدْخِلَ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted some of the people of Quraysh to embrace Islam in the future. Imagine if there was a fight that day, Amr ibn al-As could have easily been killed. The great companion Amr ibn al-As could have been killed before he even became Muslim. Khalid ibn al-Walid could have been killed before he became Muslim. That time, that moment, Khalid ibn al-Walid was not a Muslim. He was against the Muslims. Imagine if the Prophet ﷺ attacked the city of Mecca and his companions that day, they could have easily killed Khalid. They could have killed Amr ibn al-As. They could have killed Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. They could have killed Suhail ibn Amr. Those great companions, those people who would become great companions after the Fath, uh, after Fath Mecca or before that, they would have been killed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and in this uh, ayah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَتُصِيبُكَ لِيُدْخِلَ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ So Allah allows some of the people to enter under His mercy. So meaning that He allows them to become believers. Subhanallah. Can you see how beautiful the Qur'an is? 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, لَوْ تَزَيَّلُوا لَعَذَّبْنَا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اِجْعَلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الْحَمِيَةَ حَمِيَةَ الْجَارِ What caused the Quraysh to act like that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to expose them. While the disbelievers had fury in their hearts, the fury of ignorance, the reason that they stopped the Prophet ﷺ from entering Mecca was what? Pride, because of their pride. They didn't want the Prophet ﷺ to go in. Why? Because they were scared that the people, other people, non Qurayshis, would accuse the Qurayshis of becoming weak. They would say to them, why did you allow Muhammad and his people to enter the city of Mecca? Okay, a few years ago, he left the city of Mecca hiding himself and his friend, the Prophet ﷺ alone and Abu Bakr and his companions were escaping the city, okay, running for their lives. But now they came to you guys with 1500 men and you couldn't stop them. That's why you allowed them to, to enter. So Allah said, إِذْ جَعَلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الْحَمِيَّةِ حَمِيَّةِ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the surah. Some of the companions, this is very important point. لَقَدْ صَدَّقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us, because some of the companions said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, you told us that we're going to perform Umrah, but that, that didn't happen. You told us that we're going to perform Umrah, but it never happened. Why, why was that? The Prophet Sallallahu is going to say to them, did I tell you you were going to perform Umrah this year? They said no. He said to them, so wait. <laughs> Can you see that? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he had a dream, and the dream that he had was like he was going to Mecca, and he was going to do Umrah, him and his companions. And then he said to them, this is what's, this what's going to happen. They went with him, but they have never been able to do Umrah that year. They, they were told to go back and come back the following year. So the Prophet when they said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, didn't you say to us we're going to perform Umrah? But we, didn't, we never did that right now. The Prophet said to them, Have I said to you, did I say to you that you were going to perform Umrah this year? Did I say to you, you're going to perform it now, this year? They said, no. He said, then you have to wait. لَقَدْ صَدَّقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, tells the companions, Allah has truly fulfilled, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly fulfilled his messenger's vision. The vision that the Prophet ﷺ has said, Allah willing, you will most certainly enter the sacred mosque in safety, shaven headed or with cropped hair without fear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And that is what's going to happen the following year. The following Dhul Qadr, the seventh year of Hijrah, what will happen? The Muslims will be allowed to enter the city of Mecca for three days. Three days where they were able to perform Umrah in peace and no one was allowed to touch them because this was part of the agreement. And that moment was the moment when Khalid, for example, fled the city. Khalid, he didn't want to see the Prophet ﷺ and his companions just enter the city of Mecca and perform Umrah and no one can touch them. So people like Khalid عنه, by that time, he was not a Muslim, he left the city of Mecca. Remember, he was a, a warrior, he, he couldn't take that, it was too much for him. So he left the city and also others like him. But look, the Prophet ﷺ, his mercy, he sent his brother Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid. And he said to him, he said to him, Rasul, the Prophet is still thinking about Khalid because he knew like Khalid was a great leader and an amazing general. Someone like him, if he, was, if he became a Muslim, he would have helped the Muslims. So the Prophet وسلم, said to Walid, I want you to go to Khalid, go after Khalid and tell him, had he become Muslim, he would, be, he would have been, he would, he would become someone who's really useful to the Muslims. And not only that, he would also be a leader someone who would be given leadership, a role in Islam and so forth. So the Prophet ﷺ was giving him da'wah, even though he was not there. So the Prophet ﷺ sent his brother to go after him. And Khalid shortly after that, inshaAllah ta'ala, shortly after that what happened? Khalid and Amr ibn al-As and Uthman ibn Abi Talha, people like them who are leaders from Quraysh, and they're like the middle rank leaders, like only Abu Sufyan and people like them are above them. So after that, you will have people like Akrim ibn Abi Jahl, you will have like uh, an Amr ibn al-As, you will have people like Khalid ibn al-Walid, they're like middle ranked leaders and generals in the army. So they're well respected. So people like them are becoming Muslims, subhanAllah. Look at when you are patient, with patience you get results. The Prophet is being told and his companions, look, your patience is gonna pay off, wait. Wait, don't kill these people right now because some of them will become Muslims. This is the beauty of being patient. And finally right now, dear brothers, Muhammadun last ayah. Have I made it long for you today? Be patient with me because we're going over the whole surah. Alhamdulillah, I'm going to give you a... a, a shall I stop now or shall I just finish it off? 
Let's finish it off, inshallah. This is the end of the week, innit? So inshallah ta'ala, we're gonna finish it off. This ayah, look, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This is how Allah concludes the surah. Muhammadun Rasulullah. Like it or don't like it, it doesn't matter. The kufari, they're being told. The munafiqs are being told. Muhammadun Rasulullah. He's the messenger of Allah. Whether you like it or you don't like it, it doesn't really matter. Muhammadun Rasulullah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ Those who follow him are harsh towards the disbelievers. But look at the next part. رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ Compassionate towards each other. Ask yourself this question today. As believers, are we ruhama to one another? <laughs> where, where has the compassion gone? Where has the mercy towards the Muslims have gone? The true believers are those who are what? Ruhama ubaynahu. Those who are merciful to one another. Those who, are, who show compassion towards one another. As a believer right now, how much compassion do you show towards other people? Unfortunately, some Muslims, they show more, more mercy to the non-Muslims than they show to the Muslims. That's the reality. Am I telling the truth or am I not telling the truth? That's the reality. The opposite. They have reversed the ayah. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ruhama ubaynahum. You see rahma in between themselves. They show rahma towards one another. They, they show each other respect. Okay, and the next surah is unbelievable surah, Surah Al-Hujurat. It will teach us the etiquette of, that a believer should have. If you don't want to miss one Fajr reflection, it has to be the next surah. Because the next surah is going to teach us the etiquette that we should have as believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to teach us some amazing etiquette and mannerism which, which the Muslims are lacking today. That's the reality of it. So inshallah ta'ala, you need to be ready for that. The next surah, surah al-Hujurat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he just tells us in a kind of like very concise way. Ruhama'u baynahum. The believers, they are merciful to one another. They, are, they show compassion towards one another. Tarahum ruka'an sujjadan yabtaguna fadlan min Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you see them kneeling and prostrating, seeking Allah's bounty. And his good pleasure. As a believer, you should be praying. That, that, should, be your, that, should, be, that should be your characteristics. Someone who prays and alhamdulillah prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone who does ruku' and so forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارُ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ رُكَعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those ones. And the finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah promises forgiveness and a great reward to those who believe and do righteous deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those ones. Allahumma ameen. Let us show each other some, some compassion. Inshallah, give each other beautiful hugs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.